Thank you. We're going to begin. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Nestor Davidson, Chair of the New York Rent Guidelines Board, and I'd like to welcome you to this meeting of the board. This is the fifth meeting in a series of public meetings and hearings to determine lease adjustments for rent-stabilized housing units in New York City, with leases commencing on or being renewed after October 1st, 2023, or on or before September 30th, 2024. To begin, I will now take a roll call. Please respond if present. Doug Apple. Present. Tennessee Sakino. Present. Christina DeRose. Present. Rob Ehrlich. Present. Arpit Gupta. Present. Alex Schwartz. Present. Christina Smith. Present. Adan Soltren. Present. And Nestor Davidson, I am present. Let the record show that we have a quorum. The proposed rental adjustments that will be voted on at this meeting will be published in the city record and posted on the Rent Guidelines Board website. NYC.gov forward slash RGB. If we could have a moment of quiet, please. As well as the New York City Rules website at http rules.cityofnewyork.us. The board will hold four public meetings for comments on the proposed guideline. June 5th at Hostos Community College, 450 Grand Concourse in the Bronx. June 8th at Jamaica Performing Arts Center, 15301 Jamaica Avenue in Queens. June 13th will be a virtual public hearing. June 15th at St. Francis College, 179 Livingston Street in downtown Brooklyn. Each of these meetings is scheduled from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Anyone who wants to comment on the proposed rule at a public hearing may must speak, sign up to speak. You can pre-register in advance starting on Monday, May 15th at 9 a.m. either through our website, again, nyc.gov forward slash RGB, or by calling 212-669-7480 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. For those who do not pre-register, we encourage, which we encourage, registration is also available at an in-person public at in-person public hearings from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. All public hearings will be live streamed. Spanish interpretation will be provided at each hearing. We can provide interpretation in other languages as well as sign language interpretation on request. Okay. Look no sound. Okay. Pause for a moment.
track with it. All right, we had uh, an issue with the YouTube feed, but we're good now. We're going to be good. As I was saying, if you are unable to attend our hearings, you can submit written, audio, or video here prior to the hearings for the Board to review starting on May 8th and continuing through June 15th. Instructions on submitting these comments will be available on the Board's website by email at ask at rgb dot nyc dot gov or by calling the rgb again at 212-669-7480 our next meeting will be thursday may 25th at the landmarks preservation commission conference room one center street ninth floor in lower manhattan starting at 9 30 a.m information about this meeting is in the meeting section of our website if you're interested in receiving email updates about RGB meetings and hearings, please go to our home page and click on email updates under quick links. You may also call the board 212-669-7480 or email the staff at ask at rgb.nyc.gov for information about future meetings. The board's final vote will take place on Wednesday, June 21st, here in the Great Hall, starting at 7 p.m. Before considering proposals from board members, I am first going to read into the record proposed language for hotel order number 53 and apartment and loft order number 55. New York City Rent Guidelines Board proposed 2023 hotel order number 53. Proposed order number 53, hotels, rooming houses, single room occupancy buildings, and lodging houses. Rent levels to be effective for leases commencing October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024.
Notice is hereby given pursuant to the authority vested in the New York City Rent Guidelines Board by the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 as amended and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974 as amended and is implemented by Resolution Number 276 of 1974 of the New York City Council and in accordance with the requirements of Section 1043 of the New York City Charter that the Rent Guidelines Board hereby proposes the following levels of fair rent increases over lawful rents charged and paid on September 30th, 2023. Applicability. This order shall apply to units and buildings subject to the hotel section of the rent stabilization law, sections 26-504C and 26-506 of the NYC Administrative Code as amended, or the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974, L1974, section 576, sections 4, 5A, and 7. With respect to any tenant who has no lease or rental agreement, the level of rent increase established herein shall be effective as of one year from the date of the tenant's commencing occupancy, or as of one year from the date of the last rent adjustment charged to the tenant, or as of October 1st, 2023, whichever is later. This anniversary date will also serve as the effective date for all subsequent Rent Guidelines Board hotel orders, unless the board shall specifically otherwise provide in the order. Where a lease or rental agreement is in effect, this order shall govern the rent increase applicable on or after October 1st, 2023, upon expiration of such lease or rental agreement, but in no event prior to one year from the commencement date of the expiring lease unless the parties have contracted to be bound by the effective date of this order. Proposed rent guidelines for hotels, rooming houses, single room occupancy buildings, and lodging houses. Pursuant to its mandate to promulgate rent adjustments for hotels, subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 as amended, Section 26-510E of the New York City Administrative Code, the Rent Guidelines Board hereby proposes the following rent adjustments. The allowable level of rent adjustment over the lawful rent actually charged and paid on September 30th, 2023 shall be, one, residential class A, apartment hotels, blank, lodging houses, blank, rooming houses, class B buildings containing less than 30 units, blank, class B hotels, blank, single room occupancy buildings, MDL section 248 SROs, blank, additional charges, proposal. It is expressly understood that the rents collectible under the terms of this order are intended to compensate in full for all services provided without extra charge on the statutory date for the particular hotel, dwelling unit, or at the commencement of the tenancy of subsequent thereto. No additional charges may be made to a tenant for such services. However, such charges may be called or identified. Statement of Basis and Purpose. The Rent Guidelines Board is authorized to promulgate rent guidelines governing hotel units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 as amended and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974 as amended. The purpose of these guidelines is to implement the public policy set forth in the findings and declaration of emergency of the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969. Section 26-501 of the New York City Administrative Code and in the legislative finding contained in the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974, Law 1974, C 576, Section 4, Section 2. Dated May blank, 2023, signed Nestor Davidson, Chair, New York City Rent Guidelines Board. New York City Rent Guidelines Board Proposed 2023 Apartment and Loft Order, number 55. Propo proposed Order number 55, Apartments and Lofts, Rent Levels for Leases Commencing on October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024. Notice is hereby given, pursuant to the authority vested in the New York City Rent Guidelines Board by the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969, as amended, and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974 as amended, and as implemented by Resolution Number 276 of 1974 
of the New York City Council, and in accordance with the requirements of Section 1043 of the New York City Charter, that the Rent Guidelines Board, RGB, hereby proposes the following levels of fair rent increases over lawful rents charged and paid on September 20th, 30th, 2023. These rent adjustments will apply to rent-stabilized apartments with leases commencing on or after October 1st, 2023 and through September 30th, 2024. Rent guidelines for loft units subject to two, Section 286, Subdivision 7 of the Multiple Dwelling Law are also included in this order. Proposed adjustment for leases for rent apartments. Together with such further adjustments as may be authorized by law, the annual adjustments for leases for apartments shall be for a one-year lease, such uh, for a one-year lease commencing on or October after October 1st, 2023, and on or before September 30th, 2024, blank. For a two-year lease commencing on or after October 1st, 2023, and on or before September 30th, 2024, blank. These adjustments shall also apply to dwelling units in a structure subject to the partial tax exemption program under Section 421A of the Real Property Tax Law or in a structure subject to Section 423 of the Real Property Tax Law as a redevelopment project. Proposed adjustments for lofts, units in the category of buildings covered by Article 7C of the Multiple Dwelling Law. The Rent Guidelines Board proposes the following levels of rent increase above the quote, base rent, close quote, as defined in Section 286, Section 4 of the Multiple Dwelling Law. For units to which these guidelines are applicable in accordance with Article 7C of the Multiple Dwelling Law. For one year increase periods, for one in year increase periods commencing on or after October 1st, 2023, and on or before September 30th, 2024. For two-year increase periods commencing on or after October 1st, 2023, and on or after, on or before September 30th, 2024, blank. Fractional terms, proposal. For the purposes of these guidelines, in any lease or tenancy for a period of up to and including one year shall be deemed a one-year lease or tenancy, and any lease or tenancy for a period of over one year and up to and including two years shall be deemed a two-year tenancy. Escalator clauses, proposal. Where a lease for a dwelling unit in effect on May 31st, 1968, or a lease in, an effect, in effect on June 30th, 1974, for a dwelling unit which became subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969, by virtue of the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974, and Resolution Number 276 of the New York City Council, contain an escalator clause for the increased cost of operation, and such clause is still in effect. The lawful rent on September 30th, 2023, over which the fair rent under this order is computed, shall include the increased rent, rental, if any, due on such clause except those charges which accrued within one year of the commencement of the renewal lease. Moreover, where a lease contained an escalator clause that the owner validly, may validly renew under the code, unless the owner has elected in writing to delete such clause, effective no later than October 1st, 2023, from the existing lease and all subsequent leases for such dwelling unit, the increased rental, if any, due under such escalator clause shall be offset against the amount of increase authorized under this order. Special adjustments under prior order, proposal. All rent adjustments lawfully implemented and maintained under previous apartment orders and included in the base rent in effect on September 30th, 2023, shall continue to be included in the base rent for, pur for the purpose of computing subsequent rents adjusted pursuant to this order. Proposed special guidelines. Under section 26-513B1 of the New York City Administrative Code and section 9E of the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974, the Rent Guidelines Board is obligated to promulgate special guidelines to aid the State Division of Housing and Community Renewal in its determination of initial legal regulated rents for housing accommodations previously subject to the City Rent and Rehabilitation Law, which are the subject of a tenant application for adjustment. The Rent Guidelines Board hereby proposes the following special guidelines. 
for dwelling units subject to rent and rehabilitation law on September 20th, 30th, 2023, which become vacant after September 30th, 2023. The special guideline shall be blank. Decontrolled units, proposal. The permissible increase for decontrolled units as referenced in order 3A, which became decontrolled after September 30th, 2023, shall be blank. Credits, proposal. Rentals charged and paid in excess of the levels of rent increase established by this order shall be fully credited against the next month's rent. Statement of basis and purpose. The Rent Guidelines Board is authorized to promulgate rent guidelines governing apartment units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 as amended and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974 as amended. The purpose of this, these guidelines is to implement the, rent pub, the public policy set forth in findings and declaration of emergency of the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969, section 26-501 of the NYC Administrative Code, and in the legislative finding contained in the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974, L-1974, C 576, section 4, bracket section 2. The Rent Guidelines Board is also authorized to promulgate rent guidelines for loft units subject to section 286, subdivision 7 of the Multiple Dwellings Law. The purpose of the loft guidelines is to implement the public policy set forth in the legislative findings of Article 7C of the Multiple Dwelling Law, section 280. Dated May blank 2023, signed Mr. Davidson Chair, New York City Rent Guidelines Board. So we are now, per our agenda, going to be considering proposals for the hotel order. And if I might ask people to allow us to conduct our business. We tried. Um, all right, we're going to do the hotel order now. The board recognizes our tenant and owner members to make proposals before any motion from the public member. Closer to the mic. OK. And we have long alternated between public members and tenant members. Last year, our tenant members presented their proposal first. So this year, by tradition, we will hear from our owner members first. Christina and Rob, do you have a motion on our hotel order? I do not have a proposal. Thank you. Um, Adan and Henesis, do you have a proposal on the hotel? I'll pass. Our owner members and our tenant members have passed. At this time, I would like to propose to put forward a motion for proposed rental adjustments for rent stabilized units. I move to adopt the language of proposed hotel order number 53 as I read it into the record at this meeting. And I move to adopt the following proposed rental adjustments for rent stabilized hotels. Residential class A apartment hotels, 0%. Lodging houses, 0%. Rooming houses, Class B buildings containing fewer than 30 units, 0%. Class B hotels, 0%. Single room occupancy buildings, MDL, Section 248 SROs, 0%. To summarize, in accordance with my motion, you are voting on the proposed adjustments as well as the proposed language of the order. We will take a roll call vote. Can we get a second? I have to, can I have a second for the motion? I'll second. We have a second. <laughs> Douglas Apple. Yes. Genesis Aquino. Yes. Christina DeRose. Yes. Robert Ehrlich. Yeah. Abstain. Arpit Gupta. Yes. Alex Schwartz. Yes. Christina Smith. Abstain. Abstain. Okay, thank you. Adan Soltren. Yes. And I vote yes. The motion passes with seven yeses, no, no opposed, and two abstentions. We will now consider motions 
for proposed apartment and loft order number 55. Before we do so, I want to remind the public that these are, thank you, I want to remind the public that these are preliminary guidelines. I encourage the public to join our annual process of public comment, and we all look forward to listening to your comments as we continue the process. Again, our owner members will get the first opportunity for a motion, followed by our tenant members. Christina and Rob, do you have a motion on this? Yes. Please. There have been many suggestions that this board should ignore the decline in net operating income in the core of Manhattan where rent-stabilized buildings are predominantly filled with free market units. We believe our proposal does just that. Our proposal...
we believe right, we're going to begin again. Thank you, Christina. Our proposal does that. Average rents in these buildings range from 1,100 to 1,300, and the NOI is between 315 and 375 per apartment. Less than two thirds of the average NOI. We cannot afford to let this invaluable stock of affordable housing begin to fall into disrepair. These defaults on debt service and other economic problems. Our proposals keep average rents affordable to three family households earning 50% of AMI or 60% per year, $60,000 per year. In short, if we ignore the core of Manhattan, the overall picture gets worse, not better. These buildings have the thinnest margins before the pandemic, and there's no reason to believe their situations will improve at all in subsequent years, unless this board takes action. An NYU report from last year detailed the negative consequences of housing and residents if the NOI ratios in highly regulated buildings do not remain constant at a minimum. We have to remember that this universe of buildings, those that are pre-74 construction with 80% or more stabilized units, is completely reliant on this world operations funded. Keep the maintenance budget funded, keep the capital budget funded, so living conditions do not deteriorate. Statutory vacancy increases and adjustments for unemployed units are no longer available since 1982. And these highly regulated buildings are unable to rely on free market units to subsidize the stabilized apartments. A decline in NOI at highly stabilized buildings is not caused by tenants because the state legislature put the responsibility to keep these buildings funded entirely on this board. And we have not done our job over the last four years. This is not also highlight some of the rising operating costs. Prices increases across the board, 7.7% on tax. Inflation was 6.2 in March 2023. Property taxes are the largest expense, averaging 28% of the building's operating costs. As for property taxes, this is something elected fish officials control. They continue to pass along large tax increases, providing higher rents. One third of the building's rent collected goes to the city and property taxes. Older buildings pay higher proportions of property taxes and income. Why do elected officials allow this to happen? Second is insurance rates. They have skyrocketed across the city, especially in the Bronx. Average insurance costs are roughly 50% larger than Manhattan. Elected officials investigate the cost of the skyrocketing. Third, inflation. This affects both renters' pockets and owners' operating costs. However, the high inflation has also led to a slower acceleration of interest rates. High interest rates coupled with declining NOI means that housing providers can no longer borrow money for major capital projects. The 2019 HSTPA devalued buildings, and this board's decision, decisions since then have been defunded. Open the books. If you're broke, have the landlords open the books up. Show us where the money is. Open your books. Landlords, if you're so broke, open the books. not cause the high property taxes, nor the high, higher insurance costs. And our, and our actions have not caused inflation or higher interest rates. 
nor did this board prevent enough housing to be constructed. As a board, we should not be in a place where we are asked to cover up for the failures of elected officials to enact reasonable housing policy over the last 50 years, 50 plus years, to solve affordable housing issues facing this city. Our responsibility as a board is to ensure these buildings remain viable, and in order to do so, revenues have to increase the operating costs. Until the government can continue the cost facing these buildings, we have no other choice but to follow the data. We believe this rent adjustment is necessary to protect the short and long-term health of rent-stabilized buildings. At this time, the owner's representatives would like to put forward a motion for proposed rental adjustment rent stabilized apartments and lofts. We move to adopt the language of proposed apartment and loft order number 55 as read into the record at this meeting. And we move to adopt the following proposed rental adjustments for rent stabilized apartments and lofts. Apartments, one year, one year lease, 7% to 10% rate, two year lease. 11% to 14% range. Loss, one year in peace period. 7% to 10% range. Loss, two year increase. 10% to 14% range. Special guideline and decontrolled unit, 27%. We understand that this request is one of the highest members of the right guidelines board in recent memory. However, we believe it is justified by property taxes, insurance rates, interest rates, fuel, electricity, natural gas, and water reserves. All of these costs to provide housing for the increase in the last year. I second the motion. Shut it down! I know it. I will now take a rent No. Good evening, everyone. Before...
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I said good evening, everyone. So before we get into our proposals, uh, I want to take a moment to thank several individuals, elected uh, groups, and organizations leading up to I, I got you. Uh, throughout the beginning of this RGB process. First and foremost, I want to thank the tenants of New York City. <laughs> for showing up and for showing out and for continuing to fight and make your voices heard. I want to thank the Rent Justice Coalition for their efforts coordinating and advocating on behalf of the tenants of New York City, in addition to the various organizers, community-based organizations, and legal service providers that support our communities. I also want to acknowledge those that testified last week at our most recent RGB hearing, including Dalsenia Glover, Chen Ren Ping, Blaise Lapierre, Sam Stein, Leah Goodridge, and Brian Sullivan. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the following individuals who submitted emails to the board pleading for the board to do the right thing and prevent a rent increase. We were we were made aware of these emails earlier today, but I think it's important for those on this panel to hear you and see you. Those that, submitted e <laughs> those that submitted emails are as follows. And for anonymity's sake, I'll only say first names. Guinevere, Billie Jean, Sue, Heather, Barbara, Susan, Daffodil, Daniel, Alexandra, Heather, Daniel, Tammy, Liana, Amy, Lionel, Henry, David, Janice, Austin, Sharon, Mary, Joanna, Alexandra, Nikki, Laura, Julia, Kathy, and Bonnie, we thank you. I also want to take a moment and thank the, the, the following ten, 10 state senators who sent a les, letter yesterday calling on the board to freeze the rent. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator Jackson, Senator Parker, Senator Sepulve Sepulveda, Senator Hoyman Siegel, Senator Gonzalez, Sen Senator Salazar, Senator Cleary, Senator Gianaris, Senator Ramos, and Senator Brisport. And lastly, we wanted to thank the Progressive Caucus of the City Council, as well as other city council members who signed on to a letter also acknowledging the difficulties and the hardships that tenants are facing this year and pushing for a rent freeze. Yeah. Those include council member powers, majority leader powers, uh, council person Hanif, uh, council person Gail Brewer, council person Krishnan, council person Aviles, uh, council person Wrestler, Shulman, Aya Deputy Speaker Ayala, Council, per Council Person Botcher, Hudson, uh, Richardson Jordan, Caban, Narcisa, uh, Nurse, Farias, Rivera, Juan, Stevens, Council Person Williams, Barron, Abreu, Gutierrez, Ose, Joseph, and Marte. We thank you. Before I turn it over to my co-rep, Hennessy Sakino to share remarks and our proposals, I just wanted to share something that Leah Goodrich highlighted last week in her testimony that I think summarizes one of the biggest issues with how this process is conceptualized every year. Frankly, the RGB does not work in alignment with its legislative mandate. To protect affordability, to prevent unconscionable rent hikes, and to push back against uprooting long-term tenants in neighborhoods. Instead, 
The board's decision-making history and track record has been abhorrent. Voting on awful rent increases that promote unaffordability, displacement, gentrification, while increasing net operating income and profits for owners. More macro than that, however, is how this issue is framed from the beginning. This debate about rent adjustments is contextualized based on a false equivalency. Over the decades, RBG chairpersons, different mayoral administrations, and board members themselves all make the offensive mistake of comparing the struggle of working class black and brown people against the performance of an individual person or corporate entity's investment portfolio. One circumstance is about livelihood, about saving families and communities and avoiding houselessness, and the other is a business decision based on financial gain and loss. They are not the same, and they will never be the same. I wanted to highlight this because much of what you may hear today and in the coming weeks is used as a basis for rent increases that these other members of the board may try to put forth and justify, though they can't. With this continuous trend of normalizing the false equivalency <clears throat> and continuing the long, it, it continues the long-term abuse of rent-stabilized tenants and their communities in our city. And with that, I'm going to pass it to my co-rep, Hennessy. Good evening. Thank you all for being here and making your voices heard. Um, and thanks for all the testimonies that were submitted and the comments uh, this morning. Yeah, and before I, I put forward the motion, just want to remind uh, my fellow board members that people in our city are getting evicted at an accelerated rate as a result of the high rents. We are dealing with the worst eviction crisis. Low-income communities of color are dealing with a record affordability crisis that is driving them out of the state in droves and are having their homes and communities being offered to the highest bidders. Since, since 2010, we lost 200,000 black people from our state. 200,000. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the number will be higher after we see the impact of the increases that were voted last year. There are currently about 70,000 people homeless in the city of New York alone. In the whole state, about 92,000 people who are homeless. And we have about 400,000 eviction cases pending in the housing courts. Again, the majority of these people who are dealing with eviction are black and brown people. And most of those people are people who are working but whose real wages aren't enough to stay in their homes. The average income, we saw in the data, all the data that we analyzed together, we, we saw that the average income is 16000 and the average rent is about 1400 the average New Yorker can barely afford to pay their utilities and, and <clears throat> without falling behind in rent. Rent stabilized New Yorkers are being forced to have psychics and live in unsafe, overcrowded conditions. I'm sure half of you here are renting just rooms so that you can pay your rent. The real wages declined 2% in 2022, while the CPI increased 6.1. We know that, we analyzed it, just a reminder. Like Adan said, this board over the years have worked in opposition to its original intent uh, of the statute. By making this about the maintaining net operating 
income, basically profits for landlords rather than maintaining affordability. During this year's session alone since March, we have spent way too much time reviewing data that makes an absurd, uh, make absurd comparison between tenant struggles uh, to prevent homelessness and the difficulties of landlords. It is important, it is important to know that despite that, the owners, despite the owner's cries, rent stabilized sales, meaning buildings, right, have gone up 14%. So that means that landlords are still buying and investing in the rent stabilized, uh, the rent stabilized business, right? And there has been zero foreclosure in, in those buildings. So I don't know what they're complaining about. In the areas, in areas like core Manhattan, where landlords experience the highest decrease in their profit, not because because the rent was about 2,700 and because buildings were mixed with market rate. Uh, we saw in 2022 and 2023 that the vacancies decreased and the rent went twice as much as they were before. So there was no loss in NOI. Also, it is important to know that for the last 30 years, owners of rent stabilized apartments have seen an NOI increase of 50%. So they're making 50% of profit of the apartments for the last 30 years. So that's, that's almost my whole life. Almost my whole life. We also know that the profits... Anyways, I, I'm just wondering, you know, why... There's no wonder why landlords have not applied for the state economic hard, uh, hardship program. Um, and based on the various testimonies that we heard from experts, many landlords have taken advantage of low interest loan and tax exemption programs that facilitate repairs at a low cost and help them increase property value and maximize their profits after regulatory agreements are up and they can resell the buildings. Yet, we are sitting here considering commensurate adjustments that are detrimental to the very communities that make this city what it is. I am sitting here as the only rent stabilized tenant in the board and I am being considered, I am, I am being asked to consider my own displacement and the displacement of millions of New Yorkers who depend on our boats to serve justice tonight. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are many tenants like my mother, who is a home attendant, earning $16 an hour paying 60%, 63% of her income towards rent. Unless I support my mother's household, she's at risk of getting evicted from her rent-stabilized apartment, just like she was in 2019, 2016, and 2017. As a rent-stabilized tenant myself, I pay $1,400, and I'm privileged, I know that. But my rent is 233, dollars above, sorry, over 30% of my paycheck. So the vote tonight can impact on whether my rent burden gets worse. And I, I mention this story because it is what is close to me, but also because I know that many of you are going through the same thing, especially black immigrant communities that live in intergenerational uh, families, households. Anyways, the board, I just want board members here tonight to consider studies like the true cost of affordable, true cost of living study, study that was uh, put out by the Fund of the City of New York that stated that 36% of working age households 
are struggling right now. 50% of working age households are unable to cover basic needs. Cost of food in NYC rose up to 8.8% last year. The cost of electricity went up 10%. And again, that's, that's not mentioning all the other increases that went up, like childcare, et cetera. Those of you who have cars, <laughs> too much. Anyways, our job tonight is to create balance and restore justice <laughs> against the real estate industry that for so long has regulated itself. We as a board are fa falling short from our job of balancing all of those inequities. Anyways, please remember that our board is not an aviation machine. Our job is to regulate the brutal capitalist market that commodifies housing and crushes the working class tenants. And one of my fellow board members said before that beggars cannot be choosers, but what I say is that whether we work, we live on fixed incomes, or depend on public assistance, rent stabilized tenants must, must have the ability to choose to live in the communities that we built and organized together. Yeah. At this time, I would like to put forward a motion for Proposed rental adjustments for rent stabilized apartments and loft. I move to adopt the language of proposed apartments and loft order number 55 as read into the record at this meeting. And I move to adopt the following proposed rental adjustments this is repetitive. <laughs> for rent stabilized apartments and loft. So we are demanding. Our range is a rollback of negative 1% to 0%. Negative 1% to 0% for one year renewals. Sorry, let me repeat this. We are asking for a rollback of negative one, per, negative one to one percent in the range for one year renewal and zero percent to two percent for two year renewals. Do we have a second? Second. The motion has been made. And the same, the same increases for love. And 0% above the MBI. in accordance with your motion, we are voting on those proposed adjustments as well as the proposed language of the order. We will take a roll call vote. Doug Apple? No. Dennis what? You know? Yes. Robert Ehrlich? No. Adjustments for rent stabilized apartments and lots. 
I move to adopt the language of the proposed apartment and lot order number 55 as read into the record at this meeting. And I move to adopt the following proposed rental adjustments for rent stable apartments and lots. One year rent lease a range of 2% to 5%. What? Doug Apple. Yes, I see you. Go. Yeah, 27. 27. Okay. Sorry. Um, Five, that's we have, crazy. Yes. Yeah. And it's just a Kino. No. Kino DeRose. Yes. Who's paying you? Robert Ehrlich. No. Disgusting. Arpit Gupta. Yes. Oh, Alex Schwartz. Yes. <laughs> no. Do I have our business being concluded? I look forward to seeing the board and the staff at our next meeting on May 25th. Thank you for your service. I make I a motion to close to adjourn. Second? Second. We are adjourned. Thank you.